Hello, I'm Sarah from the South London Swing Library and today I've come to talk to you about the Armadillo Baby Carrier from Bump Suit. Um, you may or may not have heard of this company. Bump Suit, by the looks of it, um, specialise in uh, pregnancy and postnatal clothing. Um, but they, yeah, seem to be dipping their toe into the world of baby carriers. Um, I saw, I happened to see two of these yesterday. I drove past somebody on the street wearing one, didn't recognise it and was really confused because I know most <laughs> slings and carriers. Um, and then somebody came into the Crystal Palace session with one and bless her, uh, has allowed me to borrow it to film um, a couple of videos with it. Um, the lady that I borrowed this from had a, quite a small baby, he's a bit petite on the small side, um, and even on its smallest size setting, this carrier is not going to fit him. Um, I mean, we, we made it smaller than the smallest size setting, uh, and it's just absolutely not going to fit, unfortunately. Um, so, uh, let me show you. It's a standard structured carrier, like many other structured carriers, works in a very similar way. Apologies about the lighting, I've left this video too late in the day, so I'm crammed into the corner here just to try and avoid the um, sun. Um, but yeah, so it, uh, it's very it's very similar structure carry to most. Waistband, padded shoulder straps, buckles. Um, down at the waist belt here, you've got uh, some little pockets and some Velcro tabs. This is so that you can make the seat wider for a bigger baby and narrower for a smaller baby. However, even on its smallest size setting, it's really quite wide. Um, and the angle, it's more about the angle of the seat. Um, it, it, it goes from the Velcro tabs right out that way. And that angle is what's gonna make it a little bit too wide for the baby. Um, particularly a very small baby. So uh, the, the carrier actually says that it works from seven to 45 pounds. Um, I mean, you know, that's a massive weight range, um, but honestly, the weight ranges on carriers, all it actually means is they sent it to a lab, the lab loaded it onto a machine, the machine pulled. It didn't tear at the lower weight limit, it didn't tear at the upper weight limit. It doesn't mean it fits at the lower weight limit and it doesn't mean it will be comfortable in it in the, at the upper weight limit. And every single carrier company puts it on the box and we assume that that's the range of, of, eight, of size of baby that, that the carrier fits. And unfortunately, it doesn't mean that. Um, and yeah, every single carrier company in the world does it. I mean, look, uh, two lay here, seven to 45 pounds, 3.2 to 20.4 kilos. Um, doesn't, I wouldn't say it fits at seven pounds and you are not going to be comfortable with a 45 pound or 20.4 kilo child in that because let's face it, as they've stated, that's around about the age of a four year old, the size of a four year old. You're not gonna put a four year old in a Tula or an Ergo baby. Um, you're gonna be looking for a toddler carrier. Um, so yes, this is unlikely to fit at the lower weight uh, limit. Um, and I'm not 100% convinced that it, you'll be comfortable in it at the upper weight limit either. Um, yeah, it's, I think this carrier is for standard, for babies who are born at a standard birth weight, I suspect this carrier is going to fit, start fitting at around about the two to three month mark. Um, if your baby is particularly petite, it's probably going to take a little bit longer than that to fit. Um, once it fits them, you may love it. Uh, so yeah, what I would say is it's, this carrier is on the kind of upper end of the price range of carriers. They're retailing them at about 300 pounds. Um, I think for that amount of money, I would want it to do more. The only carrying positions they show in this carrier are parent facing on your front and facing away on your front. Um, I don't know that it would fit particularly well in the facing away position because of the shape of the seat. Um, uh, for 300 pounds, I want to be able to wear it on my hip and on my back as well. Um, and there's no reason that you couldn't use this on your hip. They don't show it in their instructions, but it would work quite well on your, well, it would work as well as on in the front on your hip. Um, but I would, I don't think I would recommend it for a back carry for various reasons. Um, I think it would need some additions, some adjustment adjustments to be able to be used as a back carrier. Um, but anyway, so down at the front here, 
you've got those little Velcro tabs inside the waist belt, make it nice and small for a smaller baby, and then incrementally out as the baby gets bigger. Um, you're then going to hold the carrier by that waistband. So you, this is what I call upside down and inside out. So it's upside down, I'm holding it by the waistband, and I've got the outside of the carrier against my body. You're going to flip that waistband in towards you, and you want to put the carrier up where you want the baby's bum to sit. You put it down here, what's going to happen is that body panel is going to feel too high on them, um, and they're also not going to be close enough to kiss. So nice and high on your body, probably around your natural waist. And then if you need to, get hold of that, the both ends, and swish it round, do it in front of you, or kind of on your side here. Basically, the way you used to do bras, get it clipped up, and then bring it back round behind you. To tighten it, you can get hold of that strap, hold the carrier still in front of you, and then pull across your body. I actually find that quite tough. Um, I don't know why, for some, for some reason, lots of carriers with buckles, it ends up being on this side, and I'm very used to kind of pushing it across my body. Having it here and having to pull it. I think if the strap were a little bit longer, it was a bit, I might feel like I would have more leverage on it. Um, but I can, can I do it this way? Yeah, that doesn't work particularly well for me, but I am very right-handed, so trying to tighten it with my left hand and pushing it across my body doesn't work very well for me. Might work better for you, but, uh, right. You want to make sure that you've got this pad roughly in the middle of your back. Now, if you're a very petite person, I am not, the first person to say I am not, um, I am five foot six, uh, I don't know what I is in centimetres. I'm five foot six tall and I'm a UK dress size about, I have to admit, I'm probably a size 14 these days. I used to like to say I was a 10 to 12. <clears throat> um, so I'm about size 14. Um, and I mean, I don't have an awful lot of space in that with, that with this back pad in. The good thing about this back pad is it's just got elastic straps. So if you find that with the back pad in, you can't get it snug enough, take the back pad out and you'll find it will cinch up a lot, a lot more. Um, it's just, yeah, you're going to come to a point with that back pad where it's going to impede the strap getting any tighter because the two ends of the waist belt are going to be butting up against the um, back pad. So if you feel like you're very petite, take that back pad off um, and then you, you're going to get some extra inches uh, to be able to tighten the waistband. So, once you've got that done up, um, who are we going to use? Well, I've got Jamie here. <clears throat> Let me show you Jamie. If Jamie was not a very well-used demo doll, Jamie would not want to open their hips up quite this wide. So, if you, your baby has their knees in front of their hips and their feet up under their bottom, it's going to be quite difficult because this body panel is quite chunky it's gonna be quite difficult to get that up between the baby's feet and then up around their body. Um, and Jamie, because Jamie is very spaghetti limbed, we actually can do it. Although, again, if Jamie were, Jamie were a real baby, um, this would be too wide because it does kind of push Jamie's legs out slightly. Um, so what, I, what you can, I don't know if you can see because of this, the, I left it too late in the day to do this and now my lighting is atrocious. But I don't know if you can see that as I bring that up, I've got Jamie's knee relatively comfortably bent over this side, but that leaves the carrier partly down Jamie's calf on this side. So that is too wide because this would not be comfortable. What you want is if I push that in, you want the baby to be able to comfortably bend their knees over both sides. But I'm really having to scrunch that to get it into the back of Jamie's knee. When I leave it spread out, it's in their calf even though they've got that one comfortably bent. So if I then shift them over this way and comfortably bend their knee over that side, then it's gonna leave it too wide on this side. So I'm just gonna ditch Jamie. Sorry, Jamie, I'm gonna ditch you. And let's just shift some of these demo dolls. Oh. This is Sydney. Sydney's a bit bigger. And if I hold Sydney here, and then bring that up over Sydney's back, 
feeling the knees. Yeah, see, that's a much better fit for Sydney. That's a much better fit. Um, Sydney's designed, I think, to be a sort of three month old. But obviously babies are different, aren't they? They're, you know, different sizes at different ages and, you know. But that's what you're looking for. You're looking to be, for the baby to be able to comfortably bend their knees over both sides of the carrier. Um, and like I say, I think for a baby born at average birth weight, um, I think it's going to be around the two to three month mark. As long as your baby can comfortably bend their knees over both sides where you've got it on its smallest size setting, then it's great, okay? So once you've got it up between your baby's feet, you're going to just roll the body panel up their body. You want it to sit no higher than the nape of their neck. So there is absolutely perfectly fine on Sydney. And I'm then gonna put the straps over my shoulders. From there, I can feel some of the weights being taken by the waistband already. I'm supporting Sydney's upper back and I have a hand free. This hand is then gonna go under this first strap that I come to to get hold of the strap on my opposite shoulder. Pull straight down to the floor first. What that does is it anchors the carrier out here on the bony part of my shoulder, rather than if I just get hold of it and put it around me, it ends up here in my neck muscles. And then if I did that on both sides, I'm gonna end up with those straps crossed really high on my back and I'm gonna be hanging the baby's weight off the back of my neck. So by getting hold of that shoulder strap, pulling straight down to the floor first, then bringing it low around my body and up to the buckle, I can then pull backwards to tighten. Sorry, Sydney. Gather your baby's hands up towards their face and that's gonna help them so you don't get the hands trapped under the um, strap. I'm then gonna swap the hands supporting the baby and I'm gonna do the same on the other side. So pull down to the floor first, bring it low around your body and up to the buckle. Clip in and pull backwards to tighten. Sorry, I've done that again with Sydney's hand, look. Gather your baby's hands towards their face. What you're gonna find is as your baby gets bigger, they'll eventually get an arm out over the top and that's absolutely fine. But in the meantime, gather your baby's hands towards their face. So there we go. This is a bit weird to be fair. This, um, I'd like to think of it as being a bit like a, a pillow or an additional head support or something like that. But the button to get it undone is really hard work. Um, it's really hard to get it undone. And then, oh, there you go. I broke my nail yesterday, so actually now it's easier. Um, once you get it undone, it then kind of doesn't do anything. You can't, if you put it up, it's not going to give you any extra head support because it doesn't stay up. So it just kind of doesn't do anything other than adding a hell of a lot of extra bulk to the, to the front of the carrier. So I don't honestly understand the point of that. Inside here, they've got a sleep hood. Now, they're not the only ones. Lots of other companies describe this as weather protection or for when the baby's asleep. I don't like either of those descriptions for, for this sort of thing. What you don't ever want to do, particularly with a small baby, is cover their face completely because you can't monitor their airways. So, you know, what, is, what earth is the point of me getting hold of this hood, clipping it onto my poppers at the back there, apart from the fact it's a pain in the bum to reach. No, no, oh, right. I, ca I can't monitor my baby's airways. So, I, I'm, why, why? It is not weather protection, it's not waterproof. Um, you don't ever want to cover your baby completely, even if it's sunny. Um, you're much better off getting a ni nice big sun hat for yourself, creating shade for the baby. Or you wear a sun hat, the baby wears a sun hat. Or you carry a parasol to create some extra shade for yourself. Um, or an umbrella, to be fair. Um, but you don't want to use something like that to cover your baby. Um, once you've got a great hulking toddler on your back, 
Things like this can be useful because these reach straps allow you to reach behind you, pull it up over their head and pop it onto the shoulders, the poppers on the shoulder straps, which then are in front of you. This carrier I'm not going to recommend for back carrying. Um, so this is absolutely pointless and this is no use at all. <laughs> um, I just think that I, it feels to me like they're trying to jump on the bandwagon of, of having a carrier. Um, and they just haven't put an awful lot of thought into it. I think it could be a, a hundred percent better than it is. Um, but yeah. Oh. Uh, am I going to be able to get that done up? No, I'm going to wait till I take it off because I don't want to damage it because it's not mine. Um, yeah. So the Armadillo by Bump Suit. Um, I won't be getting one for the library. Uh, if you love the look of it, um, and you want one, then absolutely go for it. There's a massive amount to be said for a carrier that absolutely makes your heart sing. Any sling or carrier that make, if you look at it and go, oh my God, then, because if you look at a carrier, sling or carrier, it doesn't matter how comfortable it is, if it makes your stomach churn, <laughs> then you are not gonna use it. And then really, what is the point? So if you love the look of it, um, if the aesthetics of it is the thing that, that makes gives you joy, then absolutely go for it. Um, I think, honestly, there are things and carriers out there that will do a much better job for a lot less money. Um, but that is absolutely a very personal choice. So if you like the look of it, you've seen celebrity influencers with it or whatever, um, go for it. You know, if you've got the 300 quid and you want to do it, do it. Um, in terms of the safety stuff, you've got exactly the same safety guidelines in this as you've got in every other sling or carrier. So once you've got it on, the word to remember for safety is ticks. So you want to be able to tick all of your safety boxes. The T stands for tight. You should be able, the baby should be held as tightly against you as if you're holding them in your arms. You want to be able to put your hand on the back of their head, do a little dip forward and not feel their body weight pull away from you. The I stands for in view. You should be able to see them without having to open the straps or go looking for them. The C stands for close enough to kiss, keeping them above your breast tissue so they can't snuggle in um, and obstruct their own airway. If you don't have any boobs and they sit a little bit lower, they're just out kissing range, not a massive disaster, as long as you're happy their airways are open. If you've got boobs or soft chest tissue, they need to be above that chest tissue on the firm part of your chest. The K stands for keeping baby's chin off baby's chest. The easiest way to know that the baby's chin is off their chest is when you do the ugly double chin manoeuvre to look down at them, they, you should be able to see the tip of their nose and everything above. As long as you can see the tip of their nose and everything above, then their chin is off their chest. The S stands for supported spine. Um, and you can check their, fully, their spine is fully supported by putting your hand on their back, lightly pressing, um, and there shouldn't be any extra space they can get closer to you uncurl or sit up. There's no space they could slump into, put their chin on their chest and close their airway. So the armadillo by bump suit, is it safe? You absolutely can use it safely. Yes. Um, you know, this is a nice, safe carry with this sling. It's a slightly bigger baby. This is absolutely not a seven pound baby. Um, Sydney's about the size of a two to three month old. Um, would I want to use it with a 45 pound child? Probably not, but again, that's a very personal thing. Um, so uh, according to the company, it is safety tested up to 45 pounds. So what I would say is when they're little, if they can comfortably bend their knees over both sides and you can tick all your safety boxes, you're absolutely fine. Once you can do that, you can use it for as long as you are comfortable using it. Once you stop being comfortable, just know that uh, there are other options out there. Um, to take it off, you're going to support their weight, unbuckle at one side, swap hands, unbuckle at the other side. You can then peel the carrier from the baby, concentrate on holding the baby and dropping the carrier. Um, and then you can get to your waist belt to take it off. There we go. Um, yeah, uh, I won't be buying one for the library. If you love the look of it, go for it. It's perfectly possible to use it safely. What you'll probably find is it will be a carrier that will take over 
once something like your stretchy wrap is no longer cutting the mustard for you. Um, but it's not going to fit a small baby. Um, and I'm not 100% convinced of how comfortable you'll be in it longer term. Um, but if you love the aesthetic and you've got the spare 300 quid, um, then go for it and enjoy. I hope that helps and I'll see you soon. Bye.